Welcome to MedSmarter lecture series. Today we will talk about high yield hematology images that are heavily tested on the exams. Before we start, just take a minute and, and subscribe so you can get notified when we post a new video. So let's dig in. Our first image over here is of acanthocyte cells. Acanthocytes are irregularly shaped non-circular cells. Uh, they can arise from either alterations in the membrane lipids or structure proteins. Alterations in the membrane lipid are seen in A-beta lipoproteinemia and liver dysfunction. Liver dysfunction, um, apolipoprotein A2 deficient lipoprotein accumulates in plasma causing increased cholesterol in RBCs. This causes abnormalities of the membranes of RBC causing remodeling um, and in the spleen and formation of the acanthocytes. In A-beta lipoproteinemia, there is deficiency of lipids and vitamin E that is going to cause the abnormal morphology of RBCs. Then we have echinocyte. Echinocytes are your same looks like acanthocytes. But the difference over here is they exhibit central pallor or lightening of the color in the center. They may be found in hyperlipidemia caused by liver dysfunction, but lipids themselves do not integrate in the membrane. Instead, it is speculated that cell surface receptors on the RBCs bind with HDL cholesterol, which induces the shape change. We are going to see bur cells in uremia in chronic kidney disease, liver disease such as cirrhosis, pyruvate kinase deficiency, and in hyperlipidemia. Next, we have teardrop cells. Teardrop cell formation is that RBCs containing various inclusions undergo pitting by the spleen to remove these inclusions. And in the process, they can be stretched too far to return to their original shape. It is also thought that this can similarly occur when RBCs with large inclusions are obstructed from passing through the microcirculation and the portion containing the inclusion gets pinched, leaving a tail end. So you can see that over here, tailed end. Okay, as teardrop cells, they are associated with myelofibrosis, Okay, and myelodysplastic syndrome. So if they, as they are associated with myelofibrosis, they are also theorized to be formed due to mechanically squeezing out from the bone marrow as a result of the infiltrative process. Next, we have schistocytes, also known as helmet cells. They occur as a result of mechanical destruction of a normal RBC. This occurs when there is damage to the blood vessel and a clot begins to form. The formation of fibrin strands in the vessels occurs as part of the clot formation process. RBC cells uh, get trapped in the fibrin strands and the shear force of the blood flow causes the RBCs to break. And the resulting fragmented cells is known as schistocytes. So we can see an irregularly shaped, jagged, and have two pointed ends. So this is our helmet cells. Where do we find these? We find these in disseminated intravascular coagulation, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, hemolytic uremic syndrome, and malfunctioning cardiac valves. Next, we have elliptocyte. So elliptocyte are abnormally shaped RBCs. They appear oval or elongated from slightly egg-shaped to rod or pencil forms. They have normal central pallor with the hemoglobin appearing concentrated at the ends of the elongated cells. The ends of the cells are blunt and not sharp like sickle cells. Where do we find them? In heredity, elliptocytosis, thalassemias, and iron deficiency. The next, we have spherocytes. Spherocytes is a sphere shaped rather than biconcave disc shape as normal. Spherocytes are found in immunologically mediated hemolytic anemias. 
like in hereditary spherocytosis, okay? And um, so what we see over here, that the mishap, okay, the L healthy RBCs are mistaken by this plane for old or damaged RBCs, and it thus constantly breaks them down, causing a cycle whereby the body destroys its own blood supply. A complete blood count will show increased reticulocytes. Uh, it's a sign of RBC production, increased RBC production. If you're going to see increased reticulocyte count, uh, decreased hemoglobin and hematocrit. We are talking about our hereditary spherocytosis where we have direct positive Coombs test. Next, we are talking about target cells. They are also known as corocytes, are RBCs that have the appearance of a shooting target with the bull's, bull's eye. Target cells may appear in association with liver disease, uh, alpha and beta thalassemia, hemoglobin C disease, iron deficiency anemia, post splenectomy, RO uh, splenectomy. Liver disease, uh, we have an activity of enzyme that is known as lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase that is going to be decreased in obstructive liver disease. Decreased enzymatic activity increases the cholesterol to phospholipid ratio and producing an increased surface area of the RBC membrane or maybe uh, increased red cell fluidity. And in post splenectomy, uh, a major function of our spleen is the clearance of opsonized, deformed, um, deformed and damaged erythrocytes by splenic macrophages. If a splenic macrophage function is abnormal or absent because of a splenectomy, altered spherocytes will not be removed from the circulation. So therefore, we are going to see increased numbers of target cells. In autosplenectomy, that is going to be caused by sickle cell anemia or hyposplenism in celiac disease. Same uh, reason will be there. A uh, major function of a spleen is the clearance of opsonized or damaged erythrocytes. But now if they have autosplenectomy, where do we see in like sickle cell anemia? So we will see a lot of numbers of target cells. Next, we have sickle cell. Sickle cell is our rigid sickle shape okay and it's the most common type is known as sickle cell anemia it is going to be as a result of an abnormality in oxygen carrying uh, protein that is hemoglobin this leads to a rigid sickle cell shape uh, problems in the sickle cell disease typically begins around five to six months of age a number of health problems may develop. Uh, maybe uh, that's known as sickle cell crisis, like anemia, swelling of the hands and feet, bacterial infections and stroke. So these are some uh, characteristics of our sickle cell anemia. Next, we have whole jolly body. So whole jolly body is a cytopathological finding of basophilic nuclear remnants. It's known as cluster of DNA in circulating RBCs. During maturation in the bone marrow, late erythroblasts normally expel their nuclei. But in some cases, a small portion of DNA remains. Its presence usually signifies a damaged or absent spleen because a healthy spleen would normally filter this type of RBCs because the function of a spleen is to filter out damaged RBCs. This DNA appears as basophilic, the purple spot, on an otherwise eosinophilic pink erythrocyte. These inclusions are normally removed by spleen, okay? But it will present an individual with functional hyposplenemia or asplenia. So where are we going to see? We are going to see whole jolly bodies in sickle cell anemia patients and patients who don't have a spleen or hyposplenemia. Next, Pepenhammer bodies. These are abnormal basophilic granules of iron that is found inside the RBCs on routine blood stain. They are a type of inclusion body composed of ferritin aggregates or mitochondria or phagosomes containing aggregated ferritin. They appear as dense blue-purple granules within the RBCs and they are usually one or two. Look at that, one or two located in the cell periphery. We are going to see these bodies in sideroblastic anemia. Do not confuse that with whole jolly body. 
in Hubble Jolly Body, you can see a single rounded spot. Over here, we can see that we have one, two, three dots. Next, we are talking about bite cells. Uh, bite cells is, uh, are an abnormally shaped mature RBCs with one or more semicircular portions removed from the cell margin, and that's how they are known as bite cells. And they are going to be as a result from processes of oxidative hemolysis, such as in a condition of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Uh, in this condition, there is uncontrolled oxidative stress that's going to cause the hemoglobin to denature and form Heinz bodies. These bites result from the mechanical removal of denatured hemoglobin during splenic filtration as our red cells attempt to migrate through endothelial cells from splenic cords into the splenic sinuses. So the function of uh, spleen was to remove uh, the damage or non-functional RBCs. So when they have those Heinz bodies, a spleen is going to take the bite, splenic macrophages. Next, Heinz bodies. So what were Heinz bodies? These are inclusions within the RBCs composed of denatured hemoglobin like we were discussing in our previous slide. Um, the presence of Heinz bodies represent damaged hemoglobin, usually through oxidative damage by administer or uh, damage by administer drugs. And also we can see in uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiencies. Thank you, everyone. I hope this video was a source of information for you. Thank you.